Oh my gosh, hold on, wait, pause. Why is it so wide? That's my arm outstretched. What? Hold on. You're not supposed to be able to see that. See this. What's happening? Hang on. Yeah, you see now that's better. Oh my gosh, I apologize. I have a new device. New lighting, new devices. Girl, she be putting in effort, right? Now today I am going to be talking about essential brushes. Now, not all of these are essential. I know, I get it, there's a bit much, but I'm gonna make them essential and talk about how to use the brushes, the best practice to use the brushes and um, how to clean them and what to use to clean your brushes. So without further ado, can do, let's uh, make these <laughs> essential. Oh, by the way, I separate them by face and eyes because I'm a bit like that. I mean, I'm a bit, you know, tidy. And um, yeah, well, I'll, I'll come back. So bear with me a minute. Now I've whittled it on down to what I believe, in my humble opinion, uh, what is essential. I think that if you're doing makeup or if you're getting into it or if you're looking to explore it or you're expanding it, whatever it be, you need at least these and what I'm gonna talk to you about. Can we first begin with how to hold a makeup brush? The uh, handles are long for a very specific reason, T be told. Do I have a pen? I think I have a pen. When I write something, we hold it down the nib, right? Like I hold the pen down here, not up here. When it comes to application to the face, no. Like it, this is gonna just pack the product in one area and you're gonna get too much pressure. Imagine if you will, a piece of artistry, like art attack, if you will. The calligraphy, the artistry, the dot, 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 dot. That's what we're doing on the face. So hold it at the back end of the brush and um, make it light and floaty. Please don't hold it down here because you're gonna, you're not drawing, you're not painting on your face. You're painting, painting with a Y, put it on the screen, paint. Um, yeah. Okay, essential brushes. Let's start with the difference between what is a dense brush and what is not a dense brush. Shall we start there? Something that is fluffy, let's call it fluffy um, and soft is more of a loose brush. Like it, it flaps about, you know, like it moves. A brush, mm, 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 I have one that's not essential, let me show you. This brush, is not is not essential tea, but um is dense like it's thick. It will pick up a lot of product, whereas something that's looser will not pick up a lot of product, and that's gonna gonna come relevant when we get to the eyes more so. However, powder brush. You need a powder brush. I'm gonna whack my way through these. I'm gonna crack on through these. Uh, powder brush, blusher brush, and I'm gonna talk about how we taper, how we use a tapered um, brush in a mere moment. A foundation brush, a highlighter brush for the, you know, the blinding to the gods above. Um, well, I'll talk about that in a second. An eyebrow brush. This one is essential for me because I'll pick up like a brown shadow, but if you get close up and have a look at this, you'll see like it's old, it needs replacing. However, it's great for if I'm just keeping my boy brows, I can just like put in some gray brown, um, and just like kind of create a fuller eyebrow with this, with an eyeshadow. But that's if I'm going a little bit like more low key. We've also got here a brush for picking up, what's it, what is it called? What is it called? Eyelash glue, oh my gosh. So I'll put some eyelash glue on the hand, I'll dab it in and I'll dab it on where uh, the lash line would go. And this, if again, if you get a close up, it might not look the absolute nicest. It's solid with eyelash glue. So this is a hard brush. Moving on, this is essential for me. It's kind of like a medium fluffy brush because I use this for my nose contour. These are the bare minimum, I would say that you need for the face. You can tell I don't use the foundation brush, but it's part of an essential kit. I use a beauty blender. And last but by no means least, I use this to go on the back of my eyebrows. If you've watched how I glue down my eyebrows and how you can glue down your eyebrows, you will see that why that is essential for me. Now, naturally, everything I'm telling you here is like the bare minimum. If you have more than the bare minimum, it's absolutely fine. Like you do you, hun. I'm just saying, if you want to learn about what you should start out with and what you should purchase, then this is why this is the video for you. But I even have a um, brush for like, if I'm doing face paints, um, and I've got a whole section of face paint brushes, but this is the base of the face, so it goes in the face 
one. Yeah, anyway, let's move up to the eyes. So the eyes, there are different options, but the essential options, I, and that's the tapered one. I would start by getting yourself a whole entire pack of brushes like this. They usually come in like packs of 20. I did buy these from Amazon because it, I brought them back when we we're in a lockdown. These are so essential and I'm gonna explain why that I even, even have spares somewhere. I don't, I don't know where. Somewhere I have spares. These are essential because they're just an all day, everyday eyeshadow brush. Great for picking up the product because it's not dense. It's not too fluffy. It's like a great medium. It is a fluffy brush, but it's like a great medium kind of a brush. Um, moving on from that though, there are tapered options of the same type of brush. The taper, I'm still going to get to in a moment because I need to talk to you about the application of a taper brush, how to use it. A cut crease, I use these for cut creases. So this is a flat, dense brush because if you have a look, you'll see the difference. One is more tightly packed than the other one. So this is gonna pick up product and it's gonna swipe across your lid amazingly perfect and you can get one of the multiple of these brushes that you have and you can blend the edge of your um cut crease so these are essential i think they come in the pack actually these kind of smaller nibby brushes like this especially the angled ones are definitely essential for getting into the corners of the eye more so this because if you look i'm kind of covering up like the vision of what i'm looking for like in the mirror you get the angle, my hand is out the way, but the application is where it needs to be. Then you've got the kind of flat. I've got these options. Like these are really dense and these are great for picking up an eyeshadow product, a powder. And they can go underneath, they can go on the lid, they can help create that definition coming out here. These ones are, I've got like five of these, I'm sure. Yes, there's another one and there's another one. Do I have another one? No, I don't have another one. Moving on, the overly fluffy brushes are just amazing for blending. You need some overly fluffy brushes. And by that, I mean, if you look at the everyday one that I mentioned, and I bring them all up to par here, this everyday one that I mentioned is your fluffy brush. But then if you get these kind of spare, smaller and bigger fluffy brushes, I call them the overly fluffy brushes because these, I wouldn't put any product on and I would just use this to move around what you've put on. So these are like just my spare fluffies and I use them to blend only. Moving on, I've got more cut crease brushes. I've got more cut crease brushes. I've got smaller fluffy brushes. These are, these are denser. A brush like this, I would use to powder over the top of a liquid because it holds more powder. You can use a translucent powder. I very often use a white eyeshadow that's in my palette up here, but I would pick it up and I'd put it on because when you pick up a powder with this brush, rather than your everyday run of the mill, have 100 of them brushes, the possibility of fallout from this brush as it's coming up here is more than the possibility of fallout from a denser brush because it's going to hold the product more. And then the others are just the same things, but just more options of them. Now let me bring us up to talking about, is there any more of them? No, the tapered brushes, which if, how am I gonna hold these? How am I gonna hold them? Which if we have a look, are all cut at the angle. Look at what happens here. I'm gonna see if I can do it this way round. I don't know if you can see this. You see these bristles, how they just glide? When you go backwards, look what happens. So I'm gonna come down, I'm gonna go straight back. Look, they stick into the skin and the tapers can create more of a stabbing effect. So that when you use, if you use them backwards, not when, please don't. If you use them backwards, you're, you're, you're stabbing it into the skin and it's gonna look a bit more staccato, a little bit more like duh, 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 especially if you're using your blusher brush backwards. So if you use the blusher brush backwards, the same thing's gonna happen. All of these bristles, I don't know if you can see it, where's the better lighting? Those inner bristles here, are just gonna stick into the skin and you're gonna get a heavier application. The heavier application, because these bristles are pushing against the skin rather than gliding across the skin. Now let's go to talk about how to clean your brushes. I am a little bit shit at the moment. <laughs> I'm a little bit shit. 
I don't have the proper um, brush shampoo. I've run out, I'm waiting for it to arrive. So what I'm using currently is not the best recommendation, but it's better than micellar water, please. For the love of life, do not just use micellar water, micellar water, micellar water, whatever you want to call it, who cares? We know what it is. Don't use that to clean your brushes. It's not cleansing. Please don't use it for your brushes. So I'm temporarily using what I used to use. This is a gel wash. Again, it's intended for the skin, but after a rinse, it's kind of okay for the brushes. I have this. This is a silicone tray. It's a, it's, it's got textures on the inside down there. I don't know if you can see them, get a close up if needed, maybe at this moment in time. Close up, Christine, close up. The way that I would use this is I'd toddle on over to the sink. I'd stick it to the bottom of the sink so that this bit is underneath the faucet. I'm not gonna use water to clean. It's just how I do it, do your own thing. Um, I would squirt either this for now or my um, shampoo in there, just one little teeny tiny bit in there. And then I'd get my brush ready to clean and I would rub it all around the bottom here. Again, look at how I'm holding the brushes, get into the habit of holding them back here. I'd rub it all around on the bottom here and then I'd go up on the different textures just to make sure that all of the product is out. These thicker ones though, I wanna be, I wanna be very clear that they can, um, ruin your brushes if you've got a, if you're using a small brush on it oh my god wait it's not going to ruin your brushes <laughs> it, it's intended for bigger brushes so those thicker ones up here are predominantly for your big brushes because you know the little holes are not going to really do good for them if you use a small brush on these big things up here the interruption to the flow of the brushes they this bristles can come loose yeah you get the gist i don't need to repeat it and then once I've done maybe three or four, maybe five or six brushes, your choice about what you, how many you wanna do, rinse this out. Just, just rip it up. This is why I have the faucet there. Um, put the, turn on the tap, just give it a rinse out. Just quickly kind of dab it dry or air dry it, whatever you wanna do, and then put it back, another squirt, and then carry on with the rest of the brushes. Oh my gosh, I almost didn't tell you how to dry them. And then to dry them, I would get this mojito glass that I have had no word of a lie for probably about 12 years. Uh, get a tissue. Oh! If that's knocked, I apologize. If the angle's different, that would be why. Sincere apologies. I would um, get my mojito glass uh, and then I'd get a tissue and I'd fold up my tissue. I'd press it at the bottom of the glass and then all of the brushes that I've just cleansed on this, I would turn upside down and I would let them dry on the tissue and then the tissue can be um, thrown away. And that is exactly how I clean my brushes and how I dry my brushes. And then that can just sit on my desk. And then once they're dry, they go back into their relevant things, ready to use relevant pots, face and eyes. So that is absolutely everything that is essential for your makeup brush collection. If you're starting out, this is a good kind of foundation to get those brushes and then kind of build up on top of them. Please, everybody, if you are not using, not this, this is not a good representation. If you are not using a brush shampoo, I'm going to put something up here that I use. I'm gonna see if it's a video or a photo, who cares? It's gonna go here now. Um, if you're not using something like this, please look at getting something like this because the hygiene of your brushes is very important. This is a delicate area around the eye. The skin is thin, the skin is delicate. I think I said that right. The skin is delicate. I thought I said thin is delicate. I don't know what I said, but I said what I said and I did probably didn't mean it, so I changed it. Whatever, let's move on. If you're putting the effort into buying a micellar water, micellar water, whatever you wanna freaking call it, if you're putting the effort into purchase this for your makeup brushes, you might as well just put the effort into purchasing a makeup brush shampoo because this is not designed to clean your brushes. A makeup brush shampoo is. You might think it's a gimmick, but believe me, it's gonna elevate your game. Um, yeah, that's all. Have a great time. As always, please subscribe. I am watching those view counts come through and just like last video, I said that a lot of them are from non-subscribed viewers and it's absolutely fine, my loves. You know, if you don't wanna subscribe, you don't wanna subscribe, but please do. I would love you long time. I'd really appreciate it. In fact, the, the thing to do it is gonna come up here like momentarily, it's gonna become like, in 10 seconds, 10 seconds, it's gonna come here. So yeah, please subscribe. I'm trying to build the channel. Thank you in advance. As always, stay safe, stay fabulous, and ciao for now. 
Bye, everyone.